myself, because I don't know how well you know me and how much all you know about my history. Um, I got a marketing degree, business degree, out in uh, Stephen F. Austin, and I was like, oh cool, I know everything about business, time to get out in the real world. And uh, I moved to Austin originally to get into the film business, doing film marketing. Worked for a producer for a short while, uh, went very well, but she couldn't pay me. So I said, uh, let me go get something else in the meantime. Long story short, ended up in real estate. And then I really started working with successful business people. People who had their own companies, who employed people who were responsible for marketing themselves against their competition and so forth. And it was then that I pretty much realized that everything I knew about business was wrong. My degree is worthless. I always joke that I keep it in a nice frame because it was a, a gift from my brother. <laughs> but any other reason than that, I'd probably get rid of it. It doesn't really do anything. Um, the, the several reasons led me up to being able to say that. One is kind of the acknowledgement of what schooling is. Schooling is a process of taking, uh, of making specialists out of people. You know, at the end of the day, now you're a specialist, and this is the task you do really well. And so your job is to be a part of a company and do that part really well for that company. They train you effectively to become a very good employee. Whereas they very rarely teach you how to be an employer or how to be a business owner or an entrepreneur and so forth. I mean, it was crazy. I took classes and part of the classwork was how to do an interview well. You know, so, I mean, I could sit there in the interview and just, you know, be awesome, answer, answer correctly and, you know, just do this right here, be sure to sit, you know, I know all that stuff. Um, there was, but they didn't teach me how to interview. They taught me how to be interviewed. Um, you know, they, they, for example, just a phrase, they, they taught you how to, taught me how to climb the corporate ladder. Not necessarily build my own. Yeah, we took a little bit of a course on, uh, a little bit of stuff on, you know, uh, legal entities. But it wasn't expected of you to know it. I mean, it's not like you're going to go out there and start a company. This is just stuff that's in the textbook that you need to know. But let's get back to you being an employee. Oh, okay, okay. You know, that's pretty much the game all the way through. Um, so, it wasn't, of course, until, you know, and also it, the professors... I only had one professor who ever did anything in the real world. All the others got their bachelors, got their masters, got their doctorate, and went right into teaching. So I don't necessarily say it's their fault, they just didn't know any better. They were teaching exactly what was in the books, the problem is they just didn't have the experience out there. And the people who really know a lot about business and can help people and teach people and are good presenters and good educators. They're not at the universities working for a tenure. They're out doing seminars at 3000 bucks a head. So, really, my education didn't start until after I got out of college. <laughs> and then that's where I've really been spending a lot of my time and money is in the education now, from there on out. Um, so, to do my quick story, <laughs> one of the things I never learned in college, I had to learn outside of college, was uh, this brief little history of business that I want to get into. And it starts in the 1800s, early 1800s. It was the first time that any one single governing power had control over all of the seas on the planet. And that was Britain. And the Queen said, okay, I want somebody to figure out how many resources are on the planet. The question's been thrown around a few times, nobody ever attempted to do it, but now they have all the resources, they say do it. Uh, there was a guy named Thomas Malthus who said, I think these are what it's, what it's going to end up being like. And he was in charge of the whole expedition. Ten years later, all the numbers come back and verify what he believed, which is the resources, all the resources on the planet are growing arithmetically while the population is growing geometrically. And one of his famous quotes is, pray all you want, it's not going to do any good, there is not enough. And so it led to this official scientific doctrine of limited, scarce resources. Um, if you read Adam Smith or other economists, they tend to point to this idea of limited resources being the fuel that drives an economy. 
what is limited and so forth. This scarcity concept. About 50 years later, after that was that that report came out, uh, Darwin came out with Darwinism, which said, which further uh, establishes yes, there's limited resources, and nature selects those who can uh, make the best use of resources to survive. And then, not too much longer after that, you had a philosophical um, explosion with uh, Karl Marx, who took those two philosophies and said. Well, uh, the people who really deserve all the resources, if, any, if there's a limited number of resources and a select few get to have it, it should be the working man. They're the one out there doing the work, the labor, the jobs, and if it wasn't for them, nothing would get done, so therefore they should be entitled to the resources. And then you had the opposing argument being the organizers who said, wait a second, if anybody's representing Darwinism here and deserves the scarce resources, it's us. We're the organizers, we're the leaders, we're the enterprisers. If it wasn't for us, you guys wouldn't have a job. And so you had the birth of, effectively, these two major conflicts of free enterprise and cap, uh, communism. And what all of this failed, all of these guys failed to uh, establish in their models was technology. With technology, you can do more with less, and the idea of scarcity really is a thing of the past. We don't need to worry about scarce resources. Um, in the 1700s, there was 98% of the population was involved in the agricultural industry, producing a little bit more than 100% of the food that was necessary to live off of. Now we have less than 2% of the population in the agricultural industry, and they can produce well over 200-300% of the world's needed, needed food supply. The problem, the food problem in the world isn't that we can't make the food or get it out there, that it's a limited resource, it's just that there's a lot of political boundaries between one place and the next, and the logistics is, is not happening. But the limited concept of it is not, not necessarily accurate. Um, I don't know everything about what's going on with this whole Russia-Georgia conflict, but I know there's a major oil pipeline somewhere in the mix of that. And I'm willing to bet what's fueling whatever this problem is, is probably based on a concept of limited, scarce resources. There's only so much, and whatever it is, we need to get. What I, I find fascinating about all of this is that it, I mean, it illustrates a lot of different points. But one is that it starts to, it starts to mention, it starts to talk about how People see the world how they effectively see themselves. Or, if I can rephrase it better, it's you don't necessarily see the world the way it is. You see it as a reflection of yourself. It gets filtered by you. And so, you know, when I read this one report that said if we were to be able to harness all the solar, wind, hydraulic, hydroelectric, uh, natural vegetational energy, and put it all together, and it effectively said we'd be using, we're, we're currently using one four millionth of one percent of the possible total energy out there. So, with that perspective, there's no reason to think that there's not enough, and we can always, we can all just do the utopian happy world kind of situation. It's, a bit, it's possible. Um, but people don't see that necessarily. We do see through our own filters. And what I'm about to get, what I want to get into here is some of the natural filters we all have and how that prevents or directs people when it, gets, when it comes into getting into business. Particularly, uh, with, uh, I think is important with definitions of words. It sounds a little, um, I don't know, trite at, at first glance to talk about what does this word mean or what